right, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and the recordings are posted to the Library Commission's YouTube channel for you to watch later at your convenience. Uh, both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please spread the word um, to anyone who you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. So similar to your state library. Uh, so we provide services and training and um, grants and databases, et cetera, et cetera, to all types of libraries in the state. So you'll find shows on Encompass Live uh, potentially for all types of libraries. Um, public, academic, K-12, um, corrections, museums, archives, historical societies, on and on. Uh, really, our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries and just the libraries in general. Um, big collective word. Uh, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Um, we bring in guest speakers from Nebraska and actually from all across the country um, to speak on Encompass Live um, sometimes, but we also have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations for us uh, about services and programs and things we have through the commission. Um, and that's what we're doing today. Joining us today is Amanda Sweet. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning. And she is our uh, the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And normally, I would go through my spiel of, hey, it's the last Wednesday of the month, so it's pretty sweet tech day. Um, normally, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> normally, the last Wednesday of the month is always pretty sweet tech, um, which is when Amanda Sweet comes on to talk about something tech related. We have tech shows on other times during the month too, but always last Wednesday of the month. However, last Wednesday, she was away at a... Um, the N10 Fellowship. N10 Fellowship. She was, yes, she was invited or approved to do a fellowship about technology, something technology related, I assume. It was actually related to digital equity. <laughs> there so, you go. Yeah. <laughs> So she was at uh, training for that um, at a state last week. So we bumped her pretty sweet tech to today. Um, but she will be back at the end of the month as well. Um, we have uh, five Wednesdays in October, which makes you know my job uh, seems to be a little harder, but actually not so bad. <laughs> um, but she will be back um, at the end of the month as well, back on her regular schedule. Um, but today, as I said, we're going to be talking about digital equity and um, learn more about that and specifically what's happening here in Nebraska related to that. Uh, so um, go ahead, Amanda, and take it away. Cool. So I have been thinking an excessive amount about digital equity because I think we all have. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's yeah. And it doesn't help that for the last week I've been with like about 20 other fellows who've all been talking about digital equity. So mm. it just kind of all wrapped up together. You got it on the brain. <laughs> right. So that is actually what spurred on this digital equity session, along with the fact that there's been a whole bunch of um, grants that have been coming out that are mm. all centered on digital equity. If you don't know, there is a nationwide effort to improve digital literacy, digital equity efforts. And so the, in this session here, I'm going to kind of give you a little baseline on what digital equity is all about, some of the key terms that you would need to kind of start building that mental framework, especially if this is completely new to you or if you're still trying to wrap your head around it. And then I'll talk about the landscape of digital equity in Nebraska as it is right now, what the current planning process is right now and kind of what's stepping up next. And then I'll talk about the priority focus areas here in Nebraska, but spoiler alert, the focus areas here in Nebraska are pretty similar to every other state. So mm -hmm. it's pretty universally applicable. We just have slightly different allocation of resources in different spots across the state. And then I'll talk about 
what digital navigators are all about and what the landscape looks like here in Nebraska and why this is important to know. Then I'll wrap up with some helpful resources and then some stuff about what we're doing near what we're doing next in digital equity here at the commission and with partner organizations. So let's dive in. So I'm going to start, I kept this slide bare bones because this link down at the bottom here, this natu the National Digital Inclusion website, they actually have a full on listing of expanded out definitions. So I'm going to give you the brief bare bones of what all this stuff is. If you wanna dig deeper into these core concepts and related terms, just click the link. It's easier to read it, yeah. And while you're mentioning that, I will say um, these slides will be made available to you all afterwards with the show recording. So yep. um, you can try and scribble down those URLs you see there if you want to, but you don't have to. You'll have the link to these Google Slides afterwards. Um, so you'll be able to get to all of these links that um, Amanda is showing. Yep. So we'll start at the top here. And digital literacy is basically the set of skills that people need to be able to navigate the world and apply digital skills to solve relevant problems in work, life, and everywhere in between. It's basically the skills we need to get by. And then digital equity means that everyone should have equal access to these opportunities and to be able to build the same skills that they need. But digital inclusion means that organizations are actively making an effort to build outreach and inclusion efforts to ensure that equity happens for digital literacy to happen. So this is sort of like the triad that's working together to make sure that everyone has access to the tools, resources they need to get by with those digital skills. And I'll have a little slide later that actually details out what those skills are. So the digital inclusion ecosystem is that it takes a lot of people to actually make this happen. So all these different organizations and individuals are coming together to be able to build a support network to provide the services that offer digital equity to the people that need it, ensuring that inclusion actually happens instead of just offering opportunity that people don't take advantage of. And then the digital navigator program means that once these ecosystems start compiling all their resources together into one single spot, it gets overwhelming for people. It's difficult for individuals or even individual organizations to be able to jump in and be able to find the resources and understand the landscape and understand what they actually need in digital literacy. So that is where the digital navigator comes into play, is that this navigator is able to navigate the growing ecosystem and understand the digital literacy frameworks, what's required in the state, what's required in organizations, what's required for job skills, what's required for life skills, and be able to connect people with the resources or provide direct training to be able to build up those digital literacy skills. So that is your framework and keep that National Digital Inclusion Alliance website link handy if you need to refer back to it later. Cool, so this slide is a lot, but it's really, once you dig into it, it's not that horribly, terrifically bad. So, a while back, I think it started around mid, like early 2022 into 2023, Nebraska was part of a nationwide effort to be able to build out a digital equity plan. And this actually started in the NITC office. In the acronym soup that I've run into for the last week, please do not ask, do not ask me what NITC stands for. I will Google it for you. But NITC was the organization that originally started the Nebraska's digital equity plan. And, and Empire, Nebraska yeah. Information Technology Commission. Thank you. I was never going to get there. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so you'll see that this digital equity plan is not on NITC's website right now. It's now taken over by the broadband office. Now that we have so, one finally, yep. yes, yes. 
and so the and so the NITC is the local branch, but the NTIA is the national branch that is actually approving all these digital equity plans across the state. So when a bunch of people kind of retired that were writing the state plan, they were trying to find the new place where this was going to live and who was going to take over. And that was the broadband office. Mm -hmm. And it took me a few phone calls to actually figure that out, but I got there. <laughs> so the if you want to read through it, that whole state plan is now at this link, but each region across Nebraska also wrote their own plan to be able to inform the design of the state plan and to be able to more localize resources and priority focus areas in their area. So when you click on these links, they actually still go over to the NITC website. So these were really, oh. okay. Hmm. I'm gonna try this a different way. And I'm going to go here, here. If I did not know that this was already a secure source, I would not have overridden it. But digital equity people. Yeah. So, yeah. It sounds like yeah. that was something about their certif their security certificate. Yeah. So it's more of a technical issue, not yeah. that it's a bad site, obviously. So where I could, I linked over to the economic development district that is actually housing the digital equity plan on their own website. So the Central Nebraska Economic Development District is housing it on their own website. But some of these links actually go back over to the NITC's website, which is where this is housed. But if you go to the original digital equity plan site on NITC's website, that is no longer updated and you'll get an error. You'll get a 404 error. So you actually have to go directly to where this is stored in the plan document. Otherwise you won't get anywhere you'll get a 403, whatever. Mm -hmm. So this is where you can find those. I'm going to talk to Diane over at the broadband office to see if we can migrate these, these individual regional plans over to the broadband office website so it's all in one spot. But I, I've been out of town. I haven't gotten a chance to email okay. her yet. <laughs> you know? You know? So for now, this is where they live. Now, if you want to, if you are not like me and you haven't read all of these different plans individually, and honestly, I'll admit that I glossed a little after a while, but the priority focus areas across the state are super similar to the priority focus areas that are across the nation. But if you look at the right hand side here, you can consider broadband office, uh, broadband access, device access, and computer basics as the foundational skills that everyone needs to be able to access everything else. So broadband has become the priority focus area across the state because it's the opening gateway that leads to everything else. And then device access is the secondary um, focus across the state along with computer basics, how do you turn on the computer, how do you use a flash drive, how do you do all this stuff. And then once you have these in place, you can head over here and then leverage digital skills to be able to um, be a parent guiding your kids to be able to use their Chromebook that was school issued, being able to communicate with friends and loved ones, being able to communicate with over a job interview to be able to build job skills, um, support the local entrepreneurs because another priority focus area across all the different um, state plans was that we need more jobs across rural Nebraska and we need more jobs in everywhere. And entrepreneurs now need more digital skills to be able to succeed in entrepreneurship. So if you look at all, and telehealth was also a major key priority focus area. So if you just look at all of these, 
you're going to see this reflected across every digital literacy category and I'll later connect you over to the digital literacy guidebook that's available on the commission's website that reflects all these different categories. So keep this in mind. And the digital equity fellowship that I just went to and all the different grants that are going out right now, they are all focusing on these different, they call it covered populations. Don't ask me how they got to that term. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Native American, I'm an ethnic minority. I've never once called myself a covered population, but whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is just the magical term that they use to cover, we need diversity, equity, and, and inclusion so that all of these different categories are represented. And I will go back and fix my icons because I built this in Canva and imported it into Google Slides so now that, that I could got share a little blurry. it. It did. <laughs> I'll fix it later. Yeah. yeah. So if you are considering writing a digital equity grant or if you want to be able to um, build out digital equity plans statewide, this is another priority focus area that has now been added into and incorporated into the state plan. And the, my colors also got messed up from when I did this in Canva and imported it over. These used to be a nice shade of teal, but whatever, I'll live with it. <laughs> so I said that these were the priority focus areas. And now all of these different groups are starting to build out their shared repositories. And so there's a groups of nonprofits, there's groups of um, libraries, groups of all these different organizations that are building out the tutorials and resources that people need to be able to succeed in these areas. And now Nebraska's second area is to build out navigators that are able to navigate resources in each one of these different key areas. It's somewhat unrealistic to ask a navigator to be able to navigate resources across all of these different areas because it can get incredibly specialized, mm -hmm. especially in like the health and wellness area, telehealth and all these different things. So what happened is that we have in the state, we have somewhat fragmented digital navigators that a lot of people don't know exists. Mm. So the I'll start at the top here um there's a group of collaboratives that are coming together that are building out the navigator system here and we'll wait for this to load here apparently internet must be slow there we go so a lot of the digital navigators are using a tool called North Star. And North Star is a resource that built that offers tutorials and resources to build computer basic skills. How do you use email? What's a computer? What's a tablet? And all these different baseline skills. North Star actually was built out of Minnesota. So it was a library and collaborative network out of Minnesota that wound up it started out as a grant and then it expanded out into basically a nationwide service. So now organizations can get a subscription to North Star for $500 a year and organizations like the Library Commission can actually get network access to North Star Digital Literacy. They don't have their rate pricing that is listed out on their website for the network map, the network access because it'll vary based on the number of site locations that require access to North Star. But so a lot of the digital navigators that are working with basic skills, both in Nebraska and statewide, a lot of them will use North Star because it's reasonably priced, it's awesome, and it's well-maintained. So please don't go anywhere, North Star, we need you. <laughs> and then we jump down into um, 
Vista Beams and Empowerment Centers are cropping up in more places. These actually started in Wyoming, but then they expanded out to other areas just across the Midwest and around that center chunk of the nation. But these are different centers that people can, like they are physical centers that people can go to to figure out internet, build digital skills, get connected, and all these different things. So there are more locations cropping up in Nebraska itself, and they have trained staff that are able to connect people over to resources. I don't think they actually call themselves digital navigators, but that's essentially what they are. They provide direct digital skill training and connect, like connect people over to resources and support services. So if you squint one eye, they're a digital navigator. <laughs> and I included this community collaborate, like community collaboratives, because this is already like a really good support infrastructure that's already in place, that's um, established and embedded across the across Nebraska already. They call them com um, community collaboratives. And these are individuals and organizations that have come together to start sharing resources. And they have navigators, um, they call them central navigators, who are able to refer people over to different support resources. And more of these central navigators are incorporating digital skills into um, their referral systems. Not every single one of them has that yet, but more of them are. Um, one of the fellows that's actually um, that I met with last week that's in the year long program, they are actually with Bring Up Nebraska. So they are working to incorporate digital skills as a more of a focus, like a focus area in this decentral navigation community that's already embedded statewide. So this is sort of like one of the key areas where this these digital literacy skills could be disseminated. And now that's starting to happen. So it's not there yet, but it's getting there, people. And the next one has been something that has already been going on for a while. And 4-H does it, there's other groups that do it. I used 4-H because they're easier to reach out to and they're easier to connect with. But this group is called 4-H Tech Change Makers and they actually train high school students and give high school students the resources to be able to provide digital skills to their community. So some groups are specifically high, like high schoolers connected over to older adults. In this case, this is high schoolers connected over to pretty much anybody, like anyone who needs to learn digital skills. So if you are a library, if you're a retirement home, if you are any community organization, you might wanna consider reaching out to 4-H and incorporating the Changemaker program into your community. And then you can turn high schoolers into digital navigators. They'll be able to build their resume skills and be able to build up their own personal life skills and we're all good. So these bottom two are examples of how digital navigation has been incorporated into specific contexts. So the Digital Workshop Center is a, it's the start of a digital navigation program because this is a group of people who are actually trained to navigate a specific set of high skill, high wage, high demand careers and certificate programs and be able to help individuals navigate and build the digital skills necessary to grow those in-demand skills. So this is specific to job skill training and again, specific to WIOA funded, WIOA eligible training. So it's specialized, but it is what it's meant to be. And the last one is for digital navigation for, um, it's basically for healthcare. They use a really specific term that escapes me at the moment, integrated behavioral health. Mm -hmm. And I know that some of the public health 
collaboratives are starting to use a similar like digital navigation. So like the region five, region six, um, all those different public health teams, mm -hmm. they're all starting to use a similar di like digital navigation, but it's trained specifically for healthcare, public healthcare, mental health, wellness. So this is where these digital navigators are starting to cluster off and specialize into their own specific focus area. So each one of these eventually, and there's probably more of these that are starting to exist that I just don't know about yet. We're still kind of uncovering them mm -hmm. and not everyone calls themselves a digital navigator. It'd be kind of weird if they did. <laughs> so they're getting out there. It's more of a concept that people are yeah. trying to, yeah. And Pretty much, yeah. And it's honestly, digital navigator is a new term, but being able to navigate resources has been around forever. I mean, mm -hmm. we're in libraries, that's what we do, but we never uh, called ourselves yeah. digital navigators. So this is just the new buzzword that is describing something that people have been doing for a while. And so if you want to learn more about the digital navigator resources, I put in some links to NDIA and digital us and digital. I, I don't know if it's digital us or digital us. I'm pr it's probably digital us. <laughs> so digital us um, worked with world education a while back. I think it was 2018 or 2019. And they work together to actually build out a digital navigator playbook. If you actually read the pay the playbook, you'll actually see the commission referenced because I was on the committee that would actually wrote this playbook. And so this actually came out and it's been updated over the like over the years to be able to walk people through the process of understanding what it takes to be a digital navigator and connects over to resources to accelerate the process. So if you jump over into digital navigators and digital navigator resources, you'll find a training guide and then the link to the playbook and then some different resources that you might need to be able to um, basically have that skill repository that your navigators can pull from so they have something to navigate. So if you're state or area doesn't already have those baseline skills aggregated, this pre-aggregates it for you. So that's a good resource and the NDIA has a good resource. And then this resource hub links over to what I just clicked on, which is embedded into the playbook. So in terms of the digital literacy resources that are available, honestly, it's a, the Library Commission is a public website. Anyone can get to it. I don't care if you're in Nebraska or not. You can, it's a link, you can click on it. Absolutely. So this digital literacy guidebook is something that I put together around 2018 or 2019, right around the time that I was on the, the World Education Committee. And I think I wrote, I think I put this together before that, because I think they picked me because of this. Hmm. So I, yeah, I think that that tracks. <laughs> so if you go down here, um, you can use this to kind of build out your understanding and start building out your own repository of resources if your local community does not already have them. Um, I recommend starting at the top and working your way down through the bottom if you're completely new to digital literacy. And you can also sift through some of the new digital literacy frameworks that have come about. So if you're trying to get like a check off the box, I've already, I've covered each one of these different categories. I also compiled a series of the different frameworks that you might want to check out. And I grabbed some for adults and then some for kids and teens and then some general frameworks that link over to specific tutorial repositories and resources. So you can check that out, go through the different sections 
and then go over into some of these different categories that sync over to um, the categories a lot that align with the digital equity plan. This was written before the digital equity plan. Right. So one of the things that is coming up next is to update this digital literacy guidebook so that it better aligns with the digital equity statewide plan. And that so it has more of a focus on digital equity inclusion. So there's some DEI in here already, but just emphasizing it is going to be one of the next steps. Mm -hmm. So if you are or if you are looking for a repository of resources to be able to connect people over to tutorials and ways to understand how to use Zoom, how to use how to build a positive online identity. These are some of the common categories that are inside each different bucket. You can click on them and it'll sync you over to support resources. I could probably pretty up the layout a little bit, but the links are there. And so this is what you can connect people over to if you are looking for stuff. And if you are a library, you can also jump down to steps to build a digital literacy plan. And this has also been converted into a course. So I'll probably be talking to um, Holly Duggan here is our, what is her actual job title? Continuing Education Coordinator. Thank you. It was right on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> but the, yeah. yeah. So she's helping to convert this into a recourseify it. It was a course a while back, but just making it a self-paced course through Niche Academy. So, but it really helps to actually update the site first before actually turning it into a course. Otherwise it's updates on updates. So it's a whole thing. So you can also use this little digital skill cluster that I put together. This, the website that I just showed has, you have to click around to different tabs to be able to get to the resources that you need. Um, this Google Sheet um, just puts it together by category. So you can click on it, go over, and it will chunk out the resources. I've also helped libraries to embed these onto um, their website. So I also built WordPress templates that you can just pop these into your computer, onto your website. So they just go into little categories. And most sites, I actually have them remove this right side panel. So I might send them an email later. Mm -hmm. And the National Skills Coalition also has this handy dandy tool with, ooh, that is totally not the right link. So, but this is also helpful. So a trick question. So the, um, this one is the United Nations put together a global framework for digital literacy skills. This was also put together in 2018. There must have been a huge digital equity push back in 2018 too, because that's when half these resources were built. And there was probably some funding that happened. But this is like a good framework to be able to build the understanding of digital literacy in a more deeply detailed version. And I put this link in here because right now we're focused on a US centric version of digital literacy, but we also have a lot of refugees coming in. Like Nebraska's Ooh. fastest growing population is actually from refugees. So they won't actually be used to the digital literacy framework this, that are specifically US based. They will have a global digital, digital literacy framework. So this will actually help you understand what digital literacy looks like in other countries and around the world. So that when you run into people that are used to a different framework and are, 
are already building out different skills and are used to thinking about these in different frameworks, this is kind of a good reference point to be able to understand how that happened and why that works and to be able to better support people from around the world because we're getting them. But the, I'll actually go to the link that I meant to put here. They're both helpful. And there. And I'll just remind people while you're pulling that up, um, if you have any questions um, or comments, um, please type into the question section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, anything you want to know more about, if you want um, Amanda to show um, more detail about any of these resources or anything that you're um, confused or unsure about or want to share, uh, please do type in there and let us know. So this one is from the National Skills Coalition. Um, I ran into them. Um, they sent out a, um, a scholarship opportunity for people to attend the National Skills Coalition for their future work and for their workforce development conference. So I did attend their conference. Um, it was either last year or the year before. There's been a lot of conferences, so it kind of <laughs> I think it was last year, but they gave a series of resources that was talking about building digital skills from the through the lens of state leadership and um, state agencies. So this is sort of a repository resource that also links over to a set of digital literacy frameworks and support resources so that you can be able to understand the landscape of digital skills inside your own um, state and then be able to build out a justification report to show which skills need to be addressed and the importance of addressing those skills so that you can prioritize it in legislation, policy, and all these different key areas. So they also have a different set of resources, like this is a good article to read through just to kind of build out um, an understanding of what's going on at a state level and what you would need to know through that lens. Um, I won't go over it because there's a reason they wrote like a whole big article about it. You'll get more out of reading it than it is me covering it for like 30 seconds during a webinar. So I will update, copy, escape. And there, fixing link now, because if I don't do it now, when will I do it? And auto saved. Boom. So the, <laughs> you go Google Docs. <laughs> so let me close some of these just so I can clean up my space a little bit here. And I'm going to go jump back into this link. And I'll show you some of the different resources that are also available through the National Skills Coalition. So if you go over into their resource area up here, and you can start reading through some of their major guidebooks that are out there and some of the different resource, the support resources that are available nationwide. And then if you go over into the skills, mis the skills mismatch category, try saying that five times fast. <laughs> then you can also get some statistics that you can pull so that you can prove that digital skills are indeed important for the people that still need some convincing. And they also have some cool, fun infographics that you can use, and you can even direct people over to this website 
to show the stats that are behind what you need. And the cool thing is that they also got some funding to be able to list out the skills mismatch per state. So if we jump on down to Nebraska, then you can also download a fact sheet. And you can use this basically, hand it to your policymakers, hand it to your legislative people, and it'll show why digital skills overall are important. And then you can use the other tools to be able to drill down into which digital skills exactly are the most important. And here in Nebraska, we also have the Nebraska Tech Collaborative who has been doing research about exactly which digital skills are necessary. And they, build, they built a tech dashboard showing which um, tech jobs are currently popular in across Nebraska, and they built out a whole bunch of different stats. So you can jump over to the Tech Collaborative's data dashboard, and they will be able, you can, apparently it takes a second to load. Hmm. So you can jump through these different key categories to be able to understand how tech jobs have changed nationwide over time and how Nebraska has been stacking up. And then you can jump over into uh, the specific jobs that are, um, you can click over on this left-hand side and find out what percentage of the jobs are actually in Nebraska versus other states. Mm -hmm. And then just use this to figure out what you might want to focus on and how many different jobs are in each different area and how many jobs are statewide so you know where to prioritize your efforts. So if you want to know specifically which digital skills are helpful, Tech Collaborative. So we've got about. I think that's good to have that really concrete um, data and things yeah. you can actually do something yeah. with. Yeah. And so there's that one, and the Department of Labor has. Department of Labor doesn't do as much with the tech specific skills. A lot of the other providers do more than some of the Department of Labor did when I last talked to them. They may have changed that since then, but eh. Resources are out there. So in terms of what is coming up next, the commission is looking at updating that digital literacy guide and. And the cloud course, yep. Yeah. Holly and you are working on, yep. Don't you love Google's slides <laughs> so you can just, you know, and then building out a right now there is the guide and then there's the clusters but even that is actually somewhat tedious to navigate mm. so converting these resources and then adding on to them with the new resources that have it, that have come about since then and turning it into a searchable database so that navigators statewide have a launching pad to be able to start or accelerate some of their digital navigator services. So it's basically like a statewide central repository that covers all the different key categories that are the focus areas of the state digital equity plan. And having like a having like a good front end user database for that repository and then partnering with different state organizations and nonprofits and groups to be able to embed that library-led resource across the state. There's probably better ways to phrase that, but you get the idea. And then expand. So right now, a lot of the digital literacy frameworks that are out there, they, fake, they focus deeply on basic digital skills. So they focus on getting access to broadband, getting device access, and the very basics of computers, how to use it, how email works, how Zoom works, and that's important. 
but now technology is moving so hyper fast that we also need to build AI literacy. How do we, like right now people are getting from, I just got connected over to a computer, I just learned how to use my email, but I also am holding a smartphone that's driven by AI. So how can we go from this is a computer to this is AI, and this is how you can stay safe in the modern digital world? Because that's what people need to know now. Mm -hmm. So expanding out that the definition of digital literacy to include the industry 4.0 technologies. And there's also the high tech resources. So this is also because I'm a tech nerd. Um, there's also these different resources on the commission website that show the basics of industry 4.0 technology and it goes into the ethics how you can experiment it try it go to learning communities to ask more about it and incorporating these high-tech resources into that statewide digital literacy repository so that people statewide can more easily move from the computer basics that already have a really sound like solid foundation of support resources and we do not need to reinvent the wheel again please do not make another tutorial about how to use a computer there's about <laughs> 80 jillion of them there's plenty yes. yeah <laughs> but we can focus more energy on building literacy around industry 4.0 and applying these new and emerging digital skills to solve community problems and embed them into our businesses, create new businesses, and drive innovation to create the jobs of the future instead of focusing on the past. So that is where we are heading. And there's robots too. So you can check those out. Who doesn't need robots? <laughs> yes, our tech kits are very popular. And you're always and adding to them too. I see the list here is getting bigger. <laughs> And I just added Marty. So Marty is actually AI ena enabled and he can walk like a little human. Oh, and wow. you can also, there's a little block that you can drag up so that you can type in any sentence in any language and translate it to another language. So some refugee groups have been having some fun with that too. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And these were actually chosen to introduce some industry 4.0 technologies. So if funding actually magically goes through, one of the things that it'll be used for is to expand these out to um, beginner level to advanced level um, technology tools like the Dubot. So the Dubot is a little robotic arm that can be used for education or industry level education and training purposes to introduce people to robotics, artificial intelligence, and more of those advanced level um, manufacturing and other skills. So this can be a tool that will actually directly lead into um, job training for high school up through adult and career um, career changers. So incorporating more of those tools would be awesome. And then connecting over to statewide organizations that already offer robotic arm certifications like the robotic heartland, the Heartland Robotics Cluster. Robotics, yeah, you can Google it, but <laughs> it runs out of Innovation Studios. So syncing all that together from beginner to this is AI and this is a robot arm is what's next. And then emphasizing DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion that Very covers important. the covered populations is the what ties it all together. So I may have talked a little fast, but it got there. <laughs> so if you have any questions, this is my contact information. If you have any questions now, Ooh, I'll yeah. pause and sip my coffee. So <laughs> ask away. Absolutely, yeah. And how um, does somebody drink all my coffee? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Need a refill. Uh, thank you, Amanda. Um, yeah, if anybody does have any questions about anything or anything um, um, in the slides, anything she talked about, want to know a little more about any parts of it, 
Um, is there anything you're doing in your libraries that has to do with digital equity uh, that you could um, you would want to share? Uh, you can type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Uh, those uh, tech kits and different things that um, libraries can borrow from us uh, are a great resource to kind of a try before you buy situation too. I mean, you can just you know um, request them and use them for a specific event or program and then return them just like anything. But uh, <coughs> excuse me, they are a good way to see is this something we might need uh, permanently at our library rather than just borrowing them from the commission. And um, I just wanted to you know add on to that that we have grants available right now. Um, our Nebraska Library Commission grants are open, so anyone who wants to potentially purchase any of this for uh, their own, um, let's see, and go to the 2025 Nebraska Library Commission grants there in the middle. Yeah. Um, if anyone wants to uh, uh, submit a grant to us, and this is for Nebraska accredited public libraries and state-run institutions, um, you could do that library improvement grant or youth grant for excellence would be two options for um, wanting to get any of those kind of that kind of equipment uh, for your libraries. So um, try them from the tech kits and then um, apply for a grant. If you're not from Nebraska, look for your state library or other um, options for doing um, applying for grants to um, purchase some of your own. Um, and I should also put in the nationwide grant program that I kept referencing and what spurred a lot of this on. Mm -hmm. This is actually through the nationwide broadband office, the right. NTIA. NTIA yes. Please don't ask me what NTIA stands for. Nation My brain just can't do that right now. National Telecommunications and Information Administration. Thank you. NTIA. <laughs> so they are the ones that wrote the digital equity grant series and a bunch of people contributed to the Digital Equity Act. So the digital equity grant series comes in three different waves. The digital equity plan that was original that was written by each different state. That round was a qualifying round, so that a state that wrote and got a plan approved would qualify for later digital equity grant opportunities. The next wave was the digital equity competitive grant, which just closed. That was due on Monday, the September 23rd, but we got our submitted, we're good. <laughs> and so that already went through. The next round of it is the digital equity capacity grant. And the capacity, so the competitive grant is like an open, um, it was open to any organization across the nation, any qualifying organization across the nation. And there was like a 1.2 or $3 billion pot that would get split out across all the different organizations. I found out last week that that grant actually had over 700 applications nationwide. And if you divvy, if you grab your calculator and split out the main pot by the max number, which is $12 million, a maximum of 100 people will be awarded that grant, but if you go to the lower end, it'll be closer to 200 people. So between 100 and 200 organizations out of that 700 will receive that grant. And then the digital equity capacity grant, the nationwide, each state was pre-allocated a certain amount of money. I think Nebraska got about six million dollars, but someone can correct me if I'm if that number is wrong. And that capacity grant will be allocated through the broadband office, who is now the um, primary access point for divvying out that money and running the grant in the state of Nebraska. So the broadband office will receive the applications for the capacity grant and that capacity grant um, opens up approximately March of 2025. 
So we haven't actually even gotten the NOFO for that yet. So it's hard to write something for a NOFO that you don't have yet. <laughs> so any organization in Nebraska can apply for Nebraska's. If you're watching this from another state, your state will also have a, the same capacity grant program, but you'll have you'll just need to find out who your contact point person is, and then they'll open up the applications and you can just track when that happens in your state. Hopefully you're already talking to your main point person in your state. If you're not, good luck. It took me four emails. <laughs> <laughs> So that, and I should, sorry, I should have talked about that earlier, but that is the main national grant series that I kept referencing. So now, if you have any questions, yeah, yeah. go to town. Uh, okay. Um, we do have one uh, comment here from one of our ESUs here in Nebraska Educational Service Units. Um, saying thank you, uh, thanks for providing this content. Um, we have several STEM trailers that we send to schools with the robotic arms, um, as yeah. well as several other labs for school libraries and students. Do you use the DoBot or do you use a different one? Oh yeah, is the area is it DoBot or some other? There are other. I assume. Yeah, she, he said yes, it's the DoBots. Yep, cool. DuBot. If you already have training and resources to resources that you use for it, please email me or call. Because <laughs> right now yeah. we're looking for like that shared repository of resources to be able to help everyone get up to speed. So if you already have tips of what works for different age groups, um, I will your curriculum your, or how yeah. you've been training, how you've been. Yeah. Um, what have you been including when you send it out? Yeah, absolutely. Reach out to Amanda. Yeah. There is her contact info right there. And any resources that are getting added to the hub, we can put your name in, in it, your organization name, whatever you want, to be able to, to attribute that resource to you. Mm -hmm. But we're just looking for things to help people accelerate their programs and share resources so we're not all reinventing the wheel eight jillion times and we can get up to speed instead of, again, please don't make another tutorial about how to use a computer. I had four and more people email me saying that they were creating that tutorial. And then I pointed them over to GCF Learn and all these different resources. And then they said, oh, so yeah. <laughs> so before um, we... Let's see if I can get to this here. He says it's ESU 10. So if you go to ESU 10's um, website, uh, oh, there it is. Um, is it on your website? Yep. Uh, here, I. Um, this is just out there for anyone to see. Um, yeah, I'm gonna um, pull presenter control back to my screen here. Cool. Uh, could do this correctly. There we go. Let me share it. It's um, mnm.esu10.org. Um, but he's going to write down your contact info as well. Uh, so, yeah, and if anyone else on this webinar who watches the recording later has resources that they want to be able to share or contribute to that shared resource hub so that you can help other people across the state get on board and get stuff going um yeah email yeah email call send a smoke signal do what you got to do <laughs> the idea is you had to share all of this everything that we um have out there yeah yeah, uh, you know, the, the digital, this is the broadband office that we have here in Nebraska. So that's where hopefully everything is uh, working towards. Um, and I did grab uh, the link. I have the link here for the slides. And I said, as I said, will be available uh, to for anyone. Yeah, let's send this over here. Uh, but I will be included with the um, recording when it is made available. All right. Does anybody else have any questions, comments, anything you want to share? 
type in your questions section. All right, I think we'll uh, work on wrapping things up here. Uh, thank you so much, Amanda, for being, uh, you know, adjusting your schedule for us <laughs> so we could still do our free sweet deck, even though it's a week later. Um, I'm gonna pop over here to my Encompass Live site. This is today's session. Um, and you see, we do have October 30th is the next time you'll be back. I don't know, maybe something Halloween uh, themed. We'll see. Oh, that could be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Keep an eye on this to see what the topic is for the end of the month. Um, I could do like a curated collection of themed activities for the tech kits. Sure, sure. I mean, it is close to Halloween, but uh, that would be I still could do, fun. Too. I could do like Christmas and then Thanksgiving and various holiday yeah holiday yeah coming up sure sure uh all right i don't see any just some thank yous coming in thank you you're welcome so this is our main encompass live page where we have our upcoming shows uh, but i mentioned i've been mentioned a few times about the recording right underneath is a link to our archives this is um where all of our show archives go the most recent one is always at the top of the page so today's show will be there uh by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest um, and we will have, let's see, I'll go to this one. Like this one, there'll be a link to the recording on our YouTube, the Library Commission's YouTube channel and a link to the slides, um, the Google Slides. Uh, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know um, when it's ready. Um, we also push out to our social media. We have a uh, Facebook page here for the show. If you use Facebook, give us a like, you'll get notifications. Here's a reminder to log in today's show. Um, introductions to our presenters, when our grant when our recordings are available. Um, we also post on our Twitter and Instagram. We have the EdComp Live hashtag that we use for the show. So if you use any of that social media, you can see out there um, when things are happening on the show. Uh, you can search our show archives, see if we've done a topic on something you may be interested in. You can search the full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want something very current. That is because this is our full show archives, and I'm not going to scroll all the way down because you can see this is a huge list. Um, but this goes all the way back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was January 2009. I think we're talking 16 years worth of shows. Yeah. Um, so if you do watch something that's really old, just pay attention to the original broadcast date. All of them have a date, so you know when it first happened. Um, many of our shows will be good and stand the test of time, be good resources still to use. Some things will become old and outdated. Uh, resources may have changed drastically. Links may no longer work anymore or be broken. Um, people have may work at different institutions than when they presented for us. <laughs> so um, just pay attention to that as you are watching any of our old shows. But uh, this is something that libraries do. We uh, maintain things for historical purposes. So as long as we have somewhere to host all of our shows, which right now is the commission's YouTube channel, we will always have our archives available for you. All right, so um, usually this is where I say, join us for next week's show, but we are off next week. Uh, next week is our state annual, uh, our state library association, the Nebraska Library Association's annual conference. And we always take that week off during the year. So there is no Encompass Live next week because we, um, many staff here and people around the state will be heading off to conference. But the week after that, um, we will come back, we will return with Dragons at the Library. Uh, new reading program through our Hastings, Nebraska Public Library. Um, we'll be presenting about that. Um, and you can see I've got all of my other shows scheduled up here going into November and even into January of 2025. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> so please do um, register for any of our other shows we have coming up. Um, the last thing I do want to mention is um, we do this weekly online show here, but we also host an annual online conference called Big Talk from Small Libraries. It is held um, always the last February of the last Friday in February every year. So next year it is February 28th, 2025, and the call for speakers is open. So if you are at a small or rural library or know someone who is who's doing something really cool, um, submit a proposal. Uh, the deadline is December 13th. 
to get your proposals in. And then by um, getting a January or so, we'll have the, comp the schedule up for depending on who submitted. Um, generally speaking, all of our presenters are from libraries who are, these are all, from, this the, you know, the, it is big talk from small libraries. These are all library presenters. There's no vendors. We don't have any sponsors. Um, we are um, co-sponsored. It's run by the Nebraska Library Commission and the Association for Rural and Small Libraries, but just as far as support and promotion. Um, but all our presenters are from libraries with an FTE or population surge of 10,000 or less. So these are really the little libraries we're talking about. So if you are one of those types of libraries or know someone, send them over to our website um, and submit a proposal. All right, I don't see any other things. Just some thank yous, thank yous. Have a great week, you too. Um, reach out to Amanda if you do have anything you want to share, digital equity, digital navigating, whatever. Um, she will um, work with you to get that all gathered together. And I think that's it for today. Thank you, everybody. Good to see you, um, Amanda. Good to have you back. <laughs> and hopefully we'll see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye.